again, I really appreciate you coming. Uh, the invitation has remained sincere. Uh, none of what you said is going to be edited out of the video. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, by being here and sharing this, you've reinforced stuff that I've been telling our community for several years now, which is why in, in May of 2006, I gave a public apology to the homosexual community of Charlotte uh, because of the insensitivities of the church community towards the struggles of the gay and lesbian community. I also want to say as a Jew, I relate to things more than you realize. Uh, I don't know if you know how many of my ancestors have been tortured to death, burned at the stake as Christ goes. Uh, I know a woman that was a Holocaust survivor, and when her daughter, uh, uh, a man, uh, rather, that when his daughter became a follower of Jesus, a Jewish man, when she said, I believe in Jesus, he heard the words, I've married Adolf Hitler. Uh, I, I can talk to you about uh, Holocaust victims being uh, tortured to death simply because they were Jews by people who then went home and, and sang Christmas songs uh, with SS men wearing God with us on our belts, uh, on, on their, their belts. And one woman that I was about to refer to, a Holocaust survivor, when she went into the prison camp, uh, what she saw written on the gates was, because you killed our God, we kill you. Uh, nonetheless, I still tell my people the truth. Jesus is our Savior and our Messiah. And I do everything in my power to overcome that evil that's been done. Evil has been done to you, Matt, and thank God you're still alive. And by God's grace, we're going to continue to dialogue with you and reach out to you because God does have something better than you've yet had or experienced. I don't mean to gang up on you in an answer in any way, and I do respect you for coming. And as you know, you're free to videotape this and get online and blog. We immediately accepted your request to be here uh, at our invitation. But it's important to understand that Scripture is still our guide. There are many things that the Scripture forbids. All sexual union outside of male, female marriage is not the best and is forbidden by God. There are many sins that keep us out. Jesus did say straight is the way that leads to life. I've been in churches now for 35 years around the world, and I've never once heard a single person speak in the language that you referred to. It's horrific. It's deplorable. I've written a whole book about anti-Semitism in church history, although I myself have not witnessed it in my circles, it's out there. We're going to do what we can to undo that. We're going to do what we can to preach exactly what Frank said, true compassion. Perhaps, Stephen, if you want to add something and address it, but again, thank you for coming. I just want to respond honestly and openly to you and not to gang up on you in an answer. Uh, and, and I can guarantee you, like it or not, there's a whole group of people that's going to be praying for you like nobody's ever prayed for you. Amen. And praying that God's love is going to be so revealed to you in a way that will be absolutely transformed. But thank you for the courage. Thank you for helping people understand a perspective that must be understood. Amen. So you said your name was Matt? Yes. Matt. Uh, I appreciate you getting up there saying what you're saying. I'm probably going to be a little bit tougher and uh, it, again, it's not to gang up on you by any means. You said God doesn't approve of gay people. Uh, I think what you should be saying really is God doesn't approve of homosexuality. Your presentation was very good. It was very emotional. And again, I'm, I'm very familiar with uh, a lot of people who speak the way that you do. I took great offense to you saying what we're saying ultimately leads to what these other pastors teach. It doesn't. What I say doesn't mean anything. What this man says, any letters, PhD, anything behind his name means nothing as well. The Word of God is clear on the issue of homosexuality. I didn't like it when I heard it. That doesn't mean that I'm going to go and, you know, your, your battle, Matt, is not against a pastor. It's not against your what was told to you in your past. You know, as a Christian, you need to forgive that man for the stuff that he said. Let go of the past and move on with your life. You're ultimately facing a question of heaven or hell. God does love you as a person. There, That goes without question. What we need to identify and separate is the whole idea of homosexuality. And again, you, you, led, you led to some points there that were kind of saying we are all ultimately leading to what that pastor said. We're not. I didn't write the Bible. The Bible changed my heart and changed my life and numerous other people's lives. 
And what Mike set out here to do tonight was to have an open dialogue of what does the Bible really say about homosexuality. And honestly, the Bible, homosexuality, and Christianity are like oil and water. They do not mix. It's not according to my word. That's according to the word of God. And I know it might sound uh, evil about saying that you might take it that way, saying that people are going to pray for you. People are going to pray for you that your eyes will be open to the truth. I appreciate you getting up there and, and putting yourself before everyone, but the truth of the matter is God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God does love you unconditionally. He died for you on a cross to set you free from your sin just as he did for me. And we'll be praying that that's going to happen for you. I can relate to uh, what Matt said because if I listened to uh, Christians as my uh, judge as to whether or not Christianity was true, I'd never be a Christian. Uh, because the problem with Christianity is Christians. That's the problem. That's our number one problem. When people say, I can't go to church because all the hypocrites down there, I say, come on now, pal, we got room for one more. <laughs> You see, because that's what the church is. The church is a hospital for sinners. It's not a country club for saints. We're here because we are fallen, and we're here because we are sinners. And I'd like to go back to what uh, Stephen had said. Let me just read this passage very quickly. I know we have limited time. This is the passage that in 1 Corinthians 6, and I want you guys to listen very carefully to it because it's an important passage. It says, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders. A lot of you going, yeah, that's right. Stand by. <laughs> nor thieves, nor the covetous. That's right. If you live in America, that just nailed you right there. That pastor who was up there preaching all that nonsense, I guarantee you he, was one of the, he, he committed one of those sins. The problem isn't that gays are going to hell. The problem is we're all going to hell. That's why Jesus had to come. He didn't come just to save heterosexuals. He came to save everybody. And so we're all on our way to hell. That's why it says, that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified by the blood of Christ. So I apologize on behalf of that pastor because he's... How many pastors out there every week teach stupid things? It happens all the time. It happens against this book. One other point I, 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 I want to make, in, and that is is that there's, there's only two. You mentioned two options. I'll give you two options. Either your morality will change the Bible, or the Bible will change your morality. It's one of the two. You're either going to deny yourself and say, I'm going to adhere to what God says, or you're going to say, no, I got my way, God. I'm going to go my way. We all are faced with that choice. Not just people who struggle with homosexual desires. Yeah, I, I...